Hello, this is Chris Minnick with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you an HTML5 beginner's guide. This video was inspired by a blog post by Robert Menning, which is available at the URL shown here. Front-end web development technologies have seen a dramatic refresh in recent years. This latest version of the languages used to make websites is known as HTML5. In this video, I'll tell you about some aspects of HTML5 that you can use in your own web projects. The first thing you need is a text editor. A text editor creates text files without the extra formatting information that a word processing program, like Microsoft Word, inserts into documents. Examples of text editors include Notepad++ on Windows or TextMate on the Mac. The text editor that I'm using is Sublime Text 2. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's a way of adding structure to the content of a document by surrounding it with special characters called tags. To get started with HTML, we'll first create a new text document and name it signup.html. Then, we put in the basic structure of an HTML page, which is shown here. Notice that the HTML starting tag and ending tags surround all of the other content. The beginning and ending tag, and everything in between them, when taken together, are known as an element. Within the HTML element are the sections of the page called the head and the body. The head element is where you put content that is about the page, but that doesn't show up in the web browser. This is known as metadata. The body element is where you put all of the content that will show up in the web browser. Version 5 of HTML introduced many new semantic elements. They're called semantic elements because they give meaning to the content contained within them. Examples of semantic elements include section, which describes a section within a document, and aside, which contains information that's related to the main content, but that can be removed without making the main content incoherent. Other semantic elements include footer, article, header, and nav. Nav is used for a website's navigation links. One of the best new features of HTML5 is its ability to play music and video files without the use of a plugin such as Adobe Flash or Microsoft Silverlight. The audio and video elements are simple to use, provided that you encode your video or audio files in the right formats. Here's what a simple use of both the audio and video elements looks like. Notice that two different files are specified for the same video or audio elements. Because of browser differences, this is necessary in order to ensure that the video or audio will be usable for the greatest possible number of users. The web browser will play the first media file inside of an audio or video element that it's capable of playing. HTML5 also gives website designers much more flexibility when it comes to typography and styling text. One new development in particular is the ability to use almost any available font inside of a web page as long as you have permission to use it, of course. Google Fonts is a great source for free fonts. Once you find a font that you want to use, you can include it into your web page with a tag like the following, and then it will be downloaded and available to anyone who views your website. In order to use different fonts, you need to know a little bit about CSS, which is the language that's used to style websites and change the way they look or otherwise appear to users. In his blog post, Robert shows you the CSS code that you can use to change the font in which content in your web page displays, and much more. Robert also covers how to create web forms to collect input from your users, and his tutorial includes sample documents that you can create in order to practice with HTML5. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to Robert for the inspiration. Check out his website at the URL shown here for other articles related to making a website. 